Welcome back to another video and today I want to talk about a topic which came to my mind or about which I learned just a few days ago and which is in my opinion nevertheless kind of interesting. But let's start from the beginning. The main reason that I even learned about this short legend which I want to present you today is that I took a deeper look into the history of Germanic tribes which came from northern Germany and southern Scandinavia and throughout the migration period actually settled in the historical Roman province of Britain, which you would now think of as England. And the main reason for this was actually that I made a German video about the Angles, which were one of these tribes and yeah, as you may know, also one of the more known and famous ones. And I took a look at their history and also in general in which way these Germanic kingdoms in Britain were founded after they migrated there in the 5th and 6th century. And something that became quite obvious to me very early on is that the most people most likely tend to think of Germanic tribes in Britain in a way which is mainly a bit one-sided. So you usually think about these Anglo-Saxons maybe even as one tribe and some people may even consider that there is a very clear continuity from this point in history on which directly led to the modern day English people. So basically it is of course quite obvious that these people were to large parts the ancestors of modern day English people and also the tradition of the English state mainly came from these tribes. But I nevertheless think that it is maybe sometimes a bit overlooked that there were actually several different kingdoms and also different tribes with different identities in these first centuries after the settlement during the migration period. And these tribes to a certain degree also had different cultures but maybe more important is that they had their own states and yeah they also sometimes fought for dominance over the British islands at this time. And this is in my opinion also somewhat interesting because the story I want to present you today, some may even know about it, is in my opinion somewhat telling about these political relationships which existed among these tribes. But it is in my opinion also, and this is one of the main reasons why I actually choose this one to talk about this topic, just overall a nice and neat little story. But in the beginning of this video I want to make clear that yeah, my pronunciation of some of the names which I use today may be very horrible and um, I'm quite sorry if I butcher any of them. But I think it should be overall still somewhat understandable which historic peoples and which historic persons I actually mean. And so I guess the main content of this video will still be quite understandable. But let's start. The short story I want to talk about is actually a legend which came from the 6th century. And you can consider this time as the late migration period and also the time in which the Germanic kingdoms all over Europe started to form and in which yeah, this medieval European landscape would begin to establish itself. But at the same time you need also to consider that Christianity was not that widespread yet. So many of the tribes which established their kingdoms were still pagan and so were also the most tribes which settled in Britain and formed their first kingdoms over there. This in turn however also means that it became one of the main goals of the church to spread Christianity among these tribes and also to become the most established religious organization in Europe. One of the main reasons why certain tribes or their ruling elites decided to convert to Christianity was that they could also in this way legitimize their reign over certain territories. And in other cases they could also claim for example the support of other Christian nations. I, I think one of the most famous examples for such a case in which a pagan tribe largely converted to Christianity is actually the case of the Frankish tribe. In the case of Britain the situation was however a bit more complex because as we already said there were several different kingdoms in Britain and many of them were to a certain degree in conflict with each other. And one of these tribes which settled in Britain was actually the tribe of the Kandvari. And the Kandvari were somewhat different from the other tribes of Britain because the other tribes were mainly of English origin and Saxon origin. And the Kandvari were the only people which were actually yeah, of Jutic origin. So overall they were somewhat isolated from the other kingdoms of the British islands, which in turn were mainly made up of Saxons and Angles. And while the Angles and the Saxons 
each had several kingdoms on the British Islands, the Jutes only had one kingdom, and this was, as already said, the kingdom of the Kantwari, which would later become the kingdom of Kent. It is also proven from a archaeological point of view that they were also in their material culture and so their overall culture most likely somewhat different from these other groups of the British Islands and this may be one of the main reason why the Kingdom of Kent later established especially in the 6th century good relationships to the continental empires of Europe. So they had for example very good relationships with the Frankish Empire which the other tribes, the Angles and Saxons on the British Islands, at this point did not have. And the fact that the Kentvari were so concerned about their good relationships with the Frankish Empire was, yeah, as it may be somewhat obvious, also that they were quite isolated among the other tribes on the British Islands. One aspect of this good connection to the Frankish Empire was then also that they converted to Christianity and they were actually the first people in Britain, most likely among the Germanic tribes, which converted to Christianity, while the other tribes, the English and the Saxon tribes, remained largely pagan. And from this time on, the Kentvari also used the fact that they were now Christians to legitimize their reign over certain territories on the British islands and also to build a certain kind of dominance over these other kingdoms. Largely due to this politics, they would later reach their zenith in the early 7th century. And this was one of the main reasons why later on many or yeah, essentially all of these kingdoms converted to Christianity. After this zenith of culture and influence which the Kingdom of Kent had in the early 7th century, there came a row of civil wars and also conflicts with the Saxons which essentially destroyed the Kingdom of Kent. But the fact that England was converted to Christianity was actually one of the main parts of their legacy which remained. And this is actually the point where the legend I want to talk about comes into play and where it may be interesting or relevant on a political level, at least in this historic period. So the Christianization of England really started in the 6th century. And this is also the time in which Gregory the Great would become Pope in Rome. And according to the story he came back from a journey to Constantinople in 585. And this was actually five years before he would become Pope and at this time I guess he was still a monk but uh, I'm not quite sure about his exact title. But when he would come back to Rome according to this legend and see that there was a merchant which traded slaves. And among these slaves were actually three children. Sometimes the legend is also a bit more specified and it is said that these three children were all boys. But what impressed Gregory about these three slave boys was actually the stunning beauty of their appearance. So they had very fair skin and very fair hair and in some variations of the legend it is explicitly stated that they were simply blonde haired and blue eyed and that this was simply something that impressed Gregory. And then he simply asked them to which people they belonged. And all of these boys according to this legend came from the kingdom of Dira. And Dira was at this time a kingdom which was dominated by yeah, the English tribe which was one of the main tribes which settled in Britain. And accordingly the boys answered him that they would come from the tribe of the Angles. And it is said that Gregory then answered to them that the name of their people would be quite fitting to them because they themselves would look like angels. And according to this legend this was the starting point of the Christian mission in Britain. Now I think the legend itself is a neat little story but as I already said, I guess that there could be even a certain political dimension to it. And now I want to talk about which political dimension this could actually be. As we have already discussed, it was actually the Kantwari who were largely responsible for the Christianization of Britain. But this story was written down by Beda the Venerable. And Beda the Venerable himself lived in the early 8th century, so this was some hundred years after the Kingdom of Kent already collapsed and, and was under the control of the Saxons. But at the same time the 8th century was actually also the period in which the English kingdoms were at their zenith. And I personally can very well imagine that one of the main reasons why this legend was recorded by Beda the Venerable himself, who was very important at this time for all kinds of historical documentations, that this story would underline the role of the English people in the context of the Christianization of Britain. And in turn this would also have been something that would have legitimized their supremacy over the other kingdoms of Britain at that time. The fact that it was explicitly mentioned that the boys actually were slave boys could also be a hint to the fact that the Kentvari 
may have at their zenith in the late 6th and early 7th century also enslaved members of the other Germanic tribes which settled in Britain and were at this time still pagan. But I guess this would be a topic in its own. Well, but that would have been a thought that I just wanted to share here. And if you do have any opinions on this topic on your own, feel free to leave a comment about this topic. But that's already the end of the video. As always, I hope you enjoyed the content and I hope as always that you will also watch the next video again. See you then.